Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphany. So, Ripple has been doing a great job when it comes to just completely demolishing the SEC. I'm very happy with that. And Ripple has also done a great job at combating all of that fear that a lot of the unsavory portions of the government have been spreading about crypto, trying to undo Ripple and Stellar and Algorand's phenomenal work. But they released this, uh, this document here on Ripple.com. Three insights on CBDC solutions from global research. And now, before we get into that, we understand that the Fed, the Fed has a great respect, respect for MIT and that they gave to MIT the job of, of researching and testing a lot of the different crypto protocol. Distributed ledger technology is so big when it comes to um, national digital currencies and central bank digital currencies, and they are taking it extremely serious. However, what I noticed is what they say in their documents is very different than what they say in public. In their documents, which they believe nobody's going to read, and a lot of people don't read, they don't like to read, and that's why they can hide things from everyone. Well, not me, you're not gonna hide anything from me. My father taught me much better than that. But that's why they feel they can hide things in those documents while coming out in the public and saying uh, and conveying a completely opposite feeling when they're speaking publicly than what they have in their documents. Now, in a lot of their documents from the IMF, Bank of International Settlements, the World Bank, I keep giving you these names so that way you can go there if you're willing to do the research and you can get their documents, start reading those PDFs. Yes, some of them are 160 pages, 182 pages, 82, and there are smaller ones, 14 pages, 52. They're all significant and you have to comb through them and you are going to have your mind blown. Now, granted, sometimes you get two or three documents that maybe they don't have anything significant in them. It doesn't change the nature of how you discover something because what I discovered, and it's in that members only video that I just released, it's 51 minutes. What we discovered is it changes everything about how I think about what Stellar, XLM, and, and XRP, and Algorand can do. It changed my entire perspective. Not only that, they are cooking up something new I'm not going to give it away. I'm not. No way. I've read through too many documents. They're cooking up something new. There are two new possibilities on the horizon that you need to know about. Ripple did a great job at keeping themselves away from that FUD by telling people, hey, Ripple has no association with how people use distributed ledger technology. Sure, it's decentralized, but we're not going to help anybody. We're not going to aid anybody. That was the proper thing to do. They... Somebody better give Brad Garlinghouse a medal, a trophy or something, because individuals like him at Ripple are the key to that generational wealth. You need people like him attacking. Heck, you need to be like Brad and attack. Be strong. Do your strong trades. But we need people like that when it comes to closing deals, when it comes to understanding what the right way uh, of going about uh, making a partnership and ensuring your partners that you're on board with them. Business loyalty is a slippery slope. However, when it comes to closing deals and having regulatory clarity, and that's like closing a major deal, by the way, but having regulatory clarity, that's major. But they're cooking up two new things that have heavy implications. The Fed had great respect for MIT. Now, MIT respects what? Efficient and advanced technologies. Algorand, Silvio Macaulay is of MIT, correct? Brilliant genius. MIT loves Algorand. I'm going to make a connection here. They love Algorand. It's one of the absolute best banking coins on the planet. That's why it's respected everywhere. People read their white paper. People understand the mind of Silvio Macaulay. They respect it. Now, I'm going to make a correlation here. If they love Algorand, we understand the genius that was behind XRP. Do we not? So if they like Algorand, they definitely are going to like, in my humble opinion, in my humble opinion, they're definitely going to like XRP. So then let's just jump out the, jump, jump, jump out the window. I like to say that. That's a very interesting way for me to say. Let's take a chance here. Let's use deductive reasoning. 
that when they were testing all of those protocol, there was no way they said, hey, we love Algorand, and yet we don't like XRP. There's no way that they said that when they were testing all of the bank coins for possible usage as central bank digital currencies. <laughs> what we uncovered is so, <laughs> I don't want to give it away. Remember when I was telling you that they could use what was called MBDCs, multi-central bank digital currencies, or MCBDCs, multi-central multi bank digital currencies? They use these two nomenclatures interchangeably, right? Something that was uncovered in that members only video, that last one, if you watch that all the way through, I suggest it, watch it all the way through. There's no ads or anything in there. Just like once you pay that members only fee, you just watch the video all the way through. You listen to it like a podcast, but you gotta, you have to watch it all the way through, listen to it all the way through. There's something in there that suggests that indeed there is the possibility of the utilization of the truest form, the truest form of multi-central bank digital currency. In, in fact, they transformed it. I don't know if I'm if what I'm conveying to you <laughs> is actually making the impact that it should. I told you the world could possibly, a multitude of banks, governments could possibly use XRP in one way and XLM in another way. Together, together. Could you imagine Algorand and XRP? One for one, one uh, reason, another for the other. And I actually think it's gonna go further than that. I think they're going to congeal a multitude of bank coins together. I told you, it looks like they what the, what the foundations and the companies did, it looked like they brought everything together into this interoperable oneness. So really, we're looking at different faces of the same, uh, of the same system. It's one system. When you look at Algo, can flow into XRP, XRP can flow into XLM, XLM can flow into HBAR. It's really one system. So even though we're talking about them separately, and sure, we do have to, in some, some capacity, look at them as separate, they're all one. The governments know this. They're not dumb, they're playing dumb. I just, listen, I'm telling you, I discovered this. They're not dumb, they're playing dumb. They wanna appear that way, so that, that way, when they go to use this, the, most of the people in the world didn't see it coming. It didn't see it coming. And so they won't benefit from it. That tsunami, do you understand? When I say tsunami, that's not a joke. The tsunami of money that could possibly be coming. No guarantees, of course. There are no guarantees here. We're not here for that. And this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't ever wanna be. I'm just telling you what I've gleaned and what I've seen from the research. And it's mind blowing. But they're not dumb. They're playing dumb to the public. They see this all as one system. That's why when regulation comes down, they're gonna regulate it all as one system, even though they all are, have different capabilities. <sighs> the governments are looking at it that way, as one system. The banks are also looking at it as one system, and they cooked up two new possibilities on how they could possibly use these things. Um, and if those possibilities happen, Stellar's working on one of those possibilities right now. My humble opinion, that's why they've been meeting with the government so much, cozying up to them so much. There's been a lot of behind the door stuff happening with XLM also with Stellar, okay? And um, they are trying, in my humble opinion, maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe, maybe all of this reading I'm doing, I just misread it, maybe. But what it looks like, Stellar, is trying to land a very, very, very big fish. Ripple, Ripple's keeping their eye on the ball. They had a focus and they're staying focused. XRP wants, XRP is going for that same fish, that same big fish, which is the United States government, but in a different way. Let me tell you something. If the United States government chooses to use XRP for what I believe they might, did you see how much the um, the interbank payments were by Fedwire? Did you see the amounts? Did you see the amounts? Do you understand what that means if that money's moving across the XRPL in any capacity? In any capacity, it's not staying at $2, $3. That's not going to happen. 
So that's why they had to combat that FUD so vehemently. XRP and Excellent are going after the big fish, the United States government, as well as all the banks. Right now, they need that. They need to land that fish. If they do, this will be one of the most epic uh, uh, floods of money anybody has ever seen ever, and it will it will literally take the 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 the, the opportunity to even hold these protocol, have them or own them in the future, it will remove it completely if things go completely according to plan. We will see. They have to continue to work hard. They have to continue to update those protocols. This is why you've seen the rapidity of how advanced they have been updating, let's say like the XRPL, the, um, the Stellar blockchain with the Starlight protocol, all of them doing these massive upgrades. You just had Algorand come out with, with massive amount of upgrades. Did you see that? There's a reason for that. And Algorand is another one. Algorand's going after the states. They're working with the states. You, saw what, you see what they're doing inside of, of um, Florida? You see what they're doing there? You see how they, they have a proof of how they can work, how they can function in El Salvador? They run everything there. Bitcoin doesn't run anything. Bitcoin is working over the Algorand blockchain, okay? We told you that when it first happened, we told you. We've been Algo, Team Algo since day one. Algorand's going after the states. You have XRP going after the banks in the United States, the big ones, I'm talking about the Fed. Don't get me wrong, XLM. XLM is going after the United States government, but in a different way. I'm not gonna give too much away with that one. Man, so. They're putting a lot in those documents. Let's go over those names again. You wanna do research, you really wanna know? Listen, yeah, I do cover some tweets from time to time. I do cover some website articles from time to time. My best work is when I'm reading those documents. It takes a long time. It takes a long time. That's when I can come out with a surgical deep dive video as the people have come to call them deep dive videos. That's one of those in there. That's my best work. You can uncover the very same things. You just have to be willing to read those documents. That's all you got to do, okay? World Bank. Don't forget them. Don't forget World Bank. Bank of International Settlements. You know them. European Central Bank. You should be checking up on them a lot. XRP and Ripples on that Digital Euro Association. You don't want to know what their, what their intention is? XRP, Ripple, I... Ripple. Good job. Good job. European Central Bank. OMFIF. O-M-F-I-F. OMFIF. World Economic Forum. And of course, the International Monetary Fund, which is very interesting. International Monetary Fund is an organization where uh, most of the time they're bullish on it, but sometimes they come out and they seem like they're throwing doubt upon DeFi and crypto. But really what they want is to control DeFi. Meanwhile, in their PDFs, they are so bullish on CBDCs. You don't get more bullish than that. <laughs> you don't. They've, they've studied it more than anyone. They have ideas on how to use them, how to build them, um, the ups and the downs, the possibilities, congealing them together with legacy system offerings. They have all of this, all of this, and the implications for XRP are unbelievable. Talking about agnostic bridge currencies, liquidity pools solving the liquidity issue that's xrp on-demand liquidity xrp holders you better know what you hold you better know that on-demand liquidity cannot be beat it gives you an assurance when you're holding xrp and you know that they have on-demand liquidity patented and they have so many anchors and they have so many banks signed up there's a reason for that. There's a reason why in a lot of those documents from a lot of these organizations, IMF, BIS, European Central Bank, just in case you don't want to do the reading, I can just tell you, they are looking at liquidity, solving liquidity issues and possible liquidity issues when it comes to using blockchains um, for central bank digital currencies and national digital currencies. There's a reason for that. Okay, so who are the protocol that solve that easily? And, and then, then look at that. Keep that in mind. Who are the protocol that solve liquidity issues easily? And then also, who are the protocol that are stretched out into these regions the most at this time? And you will come up with none other than Ripple XRP 
on-demand liquidity. They solve those liquidity issues that the IMF and BIS bring up consistently. They solve those issues. And XLM, they have, uh, uh, what do you call it? Instant liquidity? <laughs> well, well, there's a, a name that they're going by. It's similar to on-demand liquidity. I think it's instant liquidity, whatever it is. They have their version of it. They are the two that solve that issue. No problems. So then if these institutions, these, these large uh, uh, financial institutions are choosing to use anybody and don't want to worry about liquidity issues, who do they choose to go to using deductive reasoning? No guarantees, but I'm saying that that it's looking good, right? It's, it's, it all makes perfect sense. So I'm going to leave you with that. Okay. I know it's Saturday. I don't want to wear you out, but when we come back next week, we're going to dig deep. I feel like having a week where we go into some numbers and do some more traditional alpha name YouTube channel type of activity, right? I had a little bit of fun, um, did a couple characters, had a couple of laughs. I need that sometimes to break up the monotony. I need that sometimes to get me fired up and bring the joy back to what I do. And I've had that. And now it's time to get back to some serious business. So we may go over some numbers. We're going to really, really dig into some of this information. So this week, I'm expecting this to be a very good week when it comes to information. So, hey, if you missed the videos, <laughs> nothing I can do about that. But we're going to do some real good stuff this week, okay? And as I said, click that little join button. Watch that video. Watch that video. The implications for the banking coins are huge. No exaggeration. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the money.